Hi, Alan Papaleo here for Jatai International. I have my beautiful friend with me with a graduated bob. I'll be doing this with two tools, the switchblade shear and the feather razor. Feather razor this side, you'll see how beautiful it is with the movement and the organic texture. Switch this around to the switchblade, you're gonna see a very strong shape. So we'll get started right now. So we're getting started now with our graduated bob and you can see I started off by sectioning her into four sections. Very basic sectioning. Uh, it's from the bevel of the head to the back of the ear on both sides, right down the center, and again on the other side, right to behind the ear. The first section I'm going to be cutting is a fairly high horizontal section. Now, I'm not cutting up here yet. What's going to happen is we'll be cutting from a very low center section and pivoting the fingers and hand around so we get that beautiful angled shape. So again, this is going to be this way, going into a longer front. This side will be done with the switchblade shears. The opposite side, same sectioning, but with the feather razor. So we'll get started. First thing, of course, dampen the hair down with the blade glide. This is really very important. It's a leave-in conditioner. This will extend the life of my shears and my razors, but also this will give you all the nutrients in the hair you need to create a beautiful, clean cut. So I'm just going to put a little bit into the hair and I'm going to get started with the cut. So you can see in that one section I did a subsection. Now if I was doing this on both sides, I would take a little bit from each side and do this. But my first section, I'm going to turn this so you can see it, is going to be a low elevation. <clears throat> now if you take this and go very, very short, uh, that's where you're going to be. It's going to be a very tight look. I'm going to just angle my fingers out slightly, and my fingers are always angled at a 45. If I do this with fingers pointing straight up to the ceiling, I'm going to square off the back, and it's going to be a layered cut instead of a graduated bob. You're going in with a switchblade shear. First of all, you never have to have them sharpened. You just basically switch out the blades, and no tools needed to do that. So the frame has a lifetime guarantee. The frame itself basically is self-aligned, so this is pretty cool and high quality steel. So first section, low elevation. Now I'll do my first cut. So I'm actually going a little bit longer at the top, a little bit closer at the nape. And I wish you could feel the, the blade here. It's very, very sharp. You can really feel this switchblade shear working beautifully. Again, a little bit of the blade glide. Now the next section, is I'm going to go a little bit higher. Now, I was right about where her occipital bone would be, that little bone that protrudes out. Now, my next section is going to go a little bit above this. Now, watch. A little bit above and over slightly. So now I'm taking that out. And we'll pin it out of the way. Some people don't like using the clips. I like to use them. It makes it nice and clean. Now I'm going to take this. Now my, my hand is going to start traveling toward her chin. So this section now... I already I see my guide underneath, so now I'm just going to work my way in that fashion. Another section. So what I'm doing is I'm really building up a nice graduated shape through the sides. Fingers pointing down and in toward her chin. Cheating the fingers a little bit closer to the neckline. So I'm creating that nice graduated movement. Last section here now builds on top of that. Now, I'm not cutting into what I cut below that. My fingers are close to the neck because I'm going from a graduated shape in the back, which is a little more higher, to almost a one length right behind the ear. And then we'll work into that. So now my next section comes down. Now, the first thing I'm going to do 
is make sure that I have the right moisture content in the hair. Very, very important for me. So I'm going to take a section to about the top of the ear. Blade glide. And instead of working in the back here, I'm going to start working on the side. So I'm just going to take this now, making sure my elevation stays nice and low next to the neck. Find my guide. And then start working my way up into my higher graduated point in the back. And again, checking the line. You can see that shape coming in. So we're shorter in the, in the back here, going longer to the front. Same thing now, building onto that front piece. So I'll just take another section out of there just to a little bit above the top of the ear. In fact, what I think I'll do to make it even more visual, I'm going to combine both the front and the back together. This way you'll be able to get a real good idea of where this shape is going. And it's important that you always have that in mind as you're doing a graduated shape, especially graduated bob, because if you lose that vision, you end up getting way too long and floppy in the front. So now watch. Bringing it down, not worried about the hair in the front. Blade glide. Starting again behind the ear. So from right here, finger angle. Now my fingers are very, very close to the bottom of the neck. And as I move my way back, my elevation goes up. If I don't see my guidelines from the very front and back, I don't make any movements. And I always check my shape as I work so you can see where I'm going. Now the front. Now when you're doing this around the front, the biggest area to worry about, and really the, I think the only area, is above the ear. So we're going to take this, finger angle comes down, Slight tapping, loosen up that hair, and just cut right in. Turn the head, and right where the hair falls naturally, we cut. Always check your response to the hair. Another section, same thing. I'll show you the, the angle right after I take this section. I'm going to make sure that my partings are not horizontal, which would make me tend to want to go this way. My partings are always going to be at the angle that I'm cutting, so they're exactly the same. So wide teeth of the comb, loosen that hair up. Starting behind the ear again. This is where the one length starts to begin in that shape. Now watch this now. If I move my fingers in this position, I'll start to graduate underneath here. I'm going to take it as close as I can to the neck. Move back, I start to elevate because I know that my elevation is right about there. And I keep moving up into my highest point of this shape. Now going into the side, again wide teeth, find my angle, first thing I do, loosen that hair above and below the ear, and just follow that line. Again, same technique. This is the nice thing about doing this kind of a shape because you don't have to worry too much about changing angles. They stay very consistent. The only thing I like to do is try to keep the amount of hair coming down very, very uh, even so that I, get a, I can really see my guide. 
and not create any kind of a, a thicker response to the ends of the hair by making too much hair onto that section. So again, light spray. And I'm starting, as I did before, right behind the ear. Notice I'm pretty close to that one length there. Wide teeth, I start to come out from the head, finding my guide. And building onto that highest point at the center there. Check the response. You can see really, really clean line right here. That's that. And again, this is with the shear, so you can really see the line so much tighter. And we have that beautiful graduation underneath. So that when you when this is dried, it's going to create that really nice soft bevel. Now I'm going to the side. Exactly the same thing, making sure that the hair that goes here, really wants to go here, doesn't come back to here to be cut. It stays right there. So I'm just going to very lightly hold on to that hair, very, very lightly, tapping, loosening it up. Making sure that I'm staying right at the natural fall. If the hair goes right in the front of her face, even on a real person, you're going to be standing right in the front. You're not going to be pulling it back to the side because you'll end up getting your graduation out of alignment. Bring the rest of the hair down. Comb it down into natural fall. Again, using the wide teeth, your combs have different teeth on it. The wider the, wider the teeth, the looser that shape is. Go to your finer teeth and you really tighten up that line. So as I'm getting to the top here, I really want this to be a, a, a little looser because this hair, when it dries, is going to start to move around, around different curves. So I want to make sure that there's a, the least amount of cleanup in the haircut afterwards. So I'm just going to, again, go back into the back here. And I'm not even using a whole lot of uh, the blade glide now because I want this hair to start drying a little bit so I can see what's happening. First section, right at the back of the ear. You start to turn the head. You start to come off of the head. This is where our graduation starts to begin. So right here. Going up higher into the center. Check out the center. That's basically done in the back here. So I'm just going to check that before I go any further. It's always important to check this as you work and go through it. So you can start seeing the graduated shape going into the front. Now look where her hair falls naturally. Again, it falls directly in front of her eye. The area that you end up having a problem with getting too long is usually right through here because we have a tendency to look at this line and we say to ourselves, well, that line goes straight down. So if I'm standing right here and pull all this hair over to here and do that line, yeah, it's going to be a straight line. But when the, when the hair is let go, this hair belongs over here, so it's actually going to get longer as it goes. So your beautiful line should go this way, is going to go this way, and it's going to curve down. So you want to make sure that you're really letting that hair fall naturally. That's so important on this shape. So again, taking this, not a whole lot of tension, very little tension, tapping above the ear, tapping below the ear, that loosens up the hair, and cut. Now again, going to where the hair falls naturally, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm cutting, my fingers are close to the skin. If I'm out here, if I'm not aware and I'm out here, I've really graduated and I've taken the, the weight off that line. So keeping this as much as I can into a one length shape. Just cutting right into that. And our last section in the front here, and again, it grows straight down over her eyes. So I'm going to be standing directly in front of that area and cutting in. So we have one side completely done. 
with our graduated bob. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see this. You can see that shape from the high point into the low point, from graduation into a one length, into a one length in the front. And now we're going to do the opposite side, the same thing, but using the feather razor. First of all, high quality steel. What I'm cutting, the hair will not get clogged in the teeth. Also, you're not gonna cut yourself. It's safe for me to use. Easy to hold, very ergonomically designed. The perfect cutting tool you can use in a salon. If we think about what we did on the right side, we had the very, very steep angle at the bottom. So we're longer at the top section of, the, of that piece, closer to the nape, so that creates a graduation. And we keep working our way around, so we go to, from this to a one length. So now switching with the razor, the same thing. Fingers higher at the back and just working our way into the bottom. Again, making sure that the hair has the same moisture content as I'm working, so I use my blade glide. Another section now comes from right above that, slightly above that, and over. And I'm always concerned and aware that my line is going to be going this way. So I have to always be aware of where my fingers are pointing. If I go with my fingers anytime horizontal or more like that, it's going to create a squared shape. I want that clean, clean angle. So again, taking the hair, finding my guide, and cutting and making sure as I do this that I continue to check the balance on both sides. And I want you to see what I'm doing also with the razor. This is important. I'm not using the flat of the razor. I'm not using the full uh, body of the razor. I'm working more what I call the heel of the razor, through here. So we have like the toe of the razor if I want to do some pointing in here. But I'm really working more with the inside heel of the razor as I'm working. And notice also that I'm not hacking at it. It's all in the wrist. It's all in a very, very gentle and artistic flow as you're working. Make sure you continue to check your lines because you don't want to be off too much in the, on, these, uh, on the second side because you're going to end up having to go to the other side and start to tweak that. And pretty soon you have a much shorter haircut than your client wanted and you're not going to be happy with the results. So taking it out of the way. Again, I'm not using that flat of the razor. I'm not taking the whole body of the razor and doing this. It's really the inside right here that I'm working with. So I'm taking the inside heel of the razor and just working my way over. And I'm really looking, I'm you know, visualizing my line. I'm, I'm seeing where that line is at. My angles and my elevation are very, very low because I need to be close to almost a one length in the front here. And you're definitely going to see a difference in how the hair lays on both sides. If I wanted the same thing on both sides, if I wanted the same shape over here on, on this side, I would stay with my, uh, my uh, switchblade shears. I'm actually wanting to create a more softer organic feel and show you the difference, the beautiful difference that a razor can make in a classic shape. So again, a very nice Angled parting, section of hair out of the way. If you need to, you go right back in again and you use your blade glide. This is allowing me to really move through the hair beautifully. There's no snagging. It's equalizing the porosity of the hair at the same time. It's conditioning it so it feels great. Now here I go. So from here, inside the heel of the razor, working my way down. If I'm in my salon working on one of my guests, I'm, my body is right to the side, right next to her as I'm working. And I'm also making sure that I'm not over directing this hair. It's coming straight down, straight down and working in. Now, if you need to, you can also switch now to the very, very toe of the razor to etch that in. 
This is the area that, again, we have a lot of problems with. And with the razor, it's a little different than with the, with the, uh, the shear. So you have to be a little uh, less aggressive with the, with the tension. So now I'm going to just hold it very, very slightly and just itch my way down. So this is the line I'm going for. I usually like to air a little bit longer. I could always go back in and cut a little bit more. Now, if you want to, you can also learn to switch your hand position and you can move in this direction also and use this to toe the razor. But again, notice that I'm not putting my finger in here and I'm not hacking at it. I'm really using the razor a little more balanced. Now, before I go any further, I'm just going to hold these front pieces here and see how much balance I have. Pretty much I'm on the, on the right track here. Now I'm going to go back in one more section here. Then you get down. Uh, I'm not getting real greedy with the amount of hair I bring down. If you catch yourself out here cutting, you have, you're going to have a hole through here. So you want to make sure you keep this very, very low because remember the hand is going closer to the neck to more of a one length shape. Now in your salons, if you want to do the whole back with the razor, this is something I do, and then switch to your switchblade shear in the front, absolutely you can do that. You can create a very hard uh, line in the front. That's very acceptable. Uh, but uh, for this shape, I want this to really have a softness. So I'm going to stay with the razor all the way. And again, Checking my balance, the rest of the hair comes down. Wide teeth. Making sure my hand is close to the head. And working my way down to the corner. Right behind the ear. Down low. And now going into the sides. Get hair out of the way that you, so you can see what you're doing. Make sure you're using the wide teeth. Return so you can see here. And again, just working your way forward. Making sure you're directly where the hair is falling naturally. And before I go any further in the front, I'm going to be checking my balance. I have to take off right about here. So just taking my time. If I need to, I could always take off a little bit more. But at this point, I can't put it back on. And I don't want to have to go to the other side and try to balance it out. Now, at the very end here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from going with my heel of the razor. But now I'm going to turned it so I have a little stronger line right in the front here, that front piece. So I can take this now and just angle it and cut. And then what we'll do is check it from the side. Is there any hair overlapping? I see one little hair sticking out there. And that's not a mistake, it's still, we're still working on it, we're still cutting, so those hairs, they just sort of move around at the top there. And after this is blown dry, of course, it'll change position a little bit also. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to do as little amount of cleanup as possible. Uh, the blow dry is done, and you can see the difference here. The razor, which has a lot more texture, which is really, really soft and, and very, very feminine. And you also have the really hard edge of the shear, creating a little more controlled look. Two great looks, one head here. Hope you like it.